Hello everyone, this video will talk you through Lagos, um, which is an example of a city in an LIC or NEE um, that has regional, national and international importance, experiences urban growth, and as a result of that has opportunities and challenges. So the first thing we want to think about when we consider Lagos as our example is exactly why then it has regional, national and international importance. So Lagos in the 1970s experienced an oil boom. Now, that brought with it huge amounts of investment and therefore created a financial and industrial centre within Lagos. Because of this as well, it facilitated the growth of other things. So like the International Airport. The International Airport then supports the migration as well as the inward and outward flows in of people in Lagos. It helped boost and gave Lagos home to 60% of the economic growth of Nigeria. Alongside which, 80% of the industry is also located here. Now we might think, well, why is that significant? Well, that's going to bring with it loads of money, okay, but also going to boost the development of the area. Now, I'm not saying that all of the opportunities that are created because of this are great. There are some drawbacks as well. So if we started to consider its importance, we want to think about, well, why has Lagos grown so much? Okay, and one of the reasons then is because of rural to urban migration. So that's people moving from the countryside to the city. So in Lagos, it's about 500,000 people per year that move to the city. So they could be in search of things like a better quality of life, employment, education, and they think that moving to Lagos is going to be the answer. Alongside that, another reason that's caused the growth here in Lagos is natural increase. Okay, Natural increase is the idea that you have more babies being born than are dying. And in Lagos, we know that's true. The fertility rate, especially, has decreased for women. So it's now at about 5.4. Whereas in the rural north, where people are moving from, this can be up to 15. Okay? So all of these factors then have contributed towards loads of opportunities for Lagos. Okay? And around the outside of my diagram here, you can see I've got lots of pictures of the things that represent opportunities as well as challenges then for Lagos. So if we start by thinking about the opportunities that urban growth has afforded Lagos, the first thing that's really key to pick out is the impact then that this has on education. So because of all of this migration, because of the natural increase, education has improved massively. Okay? And as a result, 68% of people access secondary education. Now, to put that in context, in rural areas, secondary education doesn't exist to the same standard, and approximately only 60% are attending primary school there. Okay? So that's a huge opportunity for Lagos. If you've got more young people accessing education, it's a high chance they're going to be entering the workforce in those higher sectors, so looking for secondary sector or even tertiary sector work. So that's really going to drive the development there of Lagos as well. If we stick with thinking about infrastructure, there's also a better range of healthcare facilities. Okay? That means more access to things like hospitals and doctors. So therefore, quality of life will have improved massively. If we continue then to consider the opportunities, 
We might also say, well, safe treated water is something that's on the rise. Okay, so safe treated water, let's add that in. However, there's only safe treated water, and this is where it becomes a challenge, for 20% of the population. Okay. 20% of the population doesn't sound like a lot. So that could be one drawback. But the increased amount of people moving into Lagos has allowed for people to develop business. Okay. And something called the informal economy here has really grown. Okay, so informal economy, we do like people you can see here with market stalls selling goods. So those are our class as social opportunities. In terms of economic, okay, well, rapid growth then has led to this new commercial centre. So there's an increase here of things like construction jobs, but also this increased investment has led to the creation of Nollywood. Okay, a bit like we'd have Bollywood or Hollywood, we now have Nollywood. So investment here has been massively pummeled into generating new business with Nollywood. If I look back at the map that I had originally, we can see that Lagos has a coastal location as well as a sheltered harbour then. So here, I might annotate on, well, this is great for shipping and trade. Okay, a coastal location means easy for ships to access, easy to import and export goods as well. So that's great. A bit like we were saying before, this centre of industry then has caused loads and loads of opportunities. We've got more people coming here. We've got more money being generated. Okay, Things are really starting to take off. However, now, because we've got all of these people moving to Lagos, this is creating some negatives for us, some challenges. Okay, So if we start by considering Makoko first, Makoko then is one of the largest slums. Okay, And in Makoko, currently, about 60% of the population are living in the slum. Now, Makoko is quite a unique slum because it's built on stilts over the water. So within Lagos, they've run out of space in the landfill. Um, the landfill is taking up too much of the area. We've seen lots of outward growth. So the only real space left to develop is over the water. Hence, this community now are starting to build their homes out over the waterfront. So the picture you can see here is of Makoko School. And I'll talk more about that in a second. But in terms of thinking, okay, about this area, let's annotate on Makoko School, just so we don't forget. So in terms of thinking about this area, we would say, well, massive challenges exist here for these people. Okay, so things like communal toilets, for example. So these are shared by up to 15 families at once. So sanitation here isn't great. Things like cholera, okay, that outbreaks because of poor sanitation. Electricity here either doesn't exist or only available illegally. Okay. So quality of life maybe for those living in the slums perhaps isn't as great as we would like it to be. If we consider the sort of jobs that we've got people doing. Well, most people here are working on the slums. Okay, when I say working in the slums or from the slums, a lot of people are working in the rubbish dump here. Okay, so we've got a lack of what we call formal jobs. Okay, for example, people like teachers and doctors, they work in the formal sector. So informal sectors typically people that the government doesn't really tend to know about. To go alongside this, we've also got people living on less than a pound per day. 
Okay, so not a lot of money is it to buy food, for example. Alongside this, these areas experience a high crime rate. And in fact, these areas are policed by a group called the Area Boys. So they're a gang that's set up, they're almost like self-policing the area. Okay, police aren't really interested in looking after this area. So the community has established its own police force here. However, we could say whilst all of these challenges exist here, there are still some positives. Okay, so the employment rate is relatively low. So low unemployment, let's add that in. So it stands at about 9.9% currently. That's lower than the rest of Nigeria. We've also got 90% of new jobs created here. Okay, well, that's great, isn't it? People are moving here. They're finding work. Okay, well, that has a massive benefit then to the people. If they're earning money, well, they're able to support themselves. Okay. So the last thing to really consider now, and the last challenge to think about then, is challenges that are created by air and traffic here. Okay, so there's little legislation for things like air pollution, for example, caused by the increased volume of traffic or the increased amount of people that are moving in here. Okay, in some places, we're up to two hour commutes, okay, for short journeys. Think about the impact that that's going to have on the environment, okay? And in fact, it does. So air pollution here is five times higher than other similar areas, okay? However, there are some opportunities created by this, okay? I'm not saying that all transport in Lagos is bad. Okay, so things like the bus rapid transit. Okay, I'll annotate that one on. So bus rapid transit. That's good. That reduces travel time. However, only currently a quarter of commuters use it. Okay. So we're saying, well, bus rapid transit's good, allows people quicker access to the city. However, only a quarter of commuters are using it. Perhaps the biggest opportunity from transport could be the 2016 light railway. Okay, we might be thinking, well, why is that good? Well, that covers right the way from west to the east side of Lagos and can take seven times more passengers than the bus rapid transit. So you might say, well, on the whole, that's actually quite successful, okay? But you do need to factor in things like cost there, for example, as well. So in terms of thinking about when you'd use Lagos in the exam, you would use this in section A, in your urban issue section, and often the examiner will ask you to weigh up opportunity versus challenge here in Lagos, okay? So look back at your notes, think about the things that we've discussed here and say to yourself, well, do I think the good outweighs the bad or does the bad here outweigh the good? Because ultimately, that's what you'll be asked to do in the exam. I hope you found this video helpful.